Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Monday, April 13th, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to ChaikinAnalytics.com forward slash today where you can sign up for an email where we get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider that hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So I hope everybody had an enjoyable uh, three-day weekend. Let's dive right back into it, though. U.S. equities were higher on Thursday, though off the best levels of the day. Major markets made strong gains on the holiday-shortened week. Treasuries were stronger with the curve steepening. High-yield bonds rallied after the Fed announcement. The dollar was weaker on the major crosses. Gold closed up 4.1%. WTI crude settled down 9.3%, reversing a strong intraday rally. And as we get back to the desk on Monday morning, futures are down about 1.3% after that sharp rally last week. Asian equities were mostly over, uh, mostly lower overnight, led by Japan and South Korea. Most European markets are closed for Easter Monday, so not a lot of trading going on over there. Treasuries are little changed after a backup in yields last week. The dollar is weaker on the yen cross, but stronger against the euro. Gold is down 70 basis points. We'll take a look at that chart a little later in the show. And WTI crude is up. 1.4%. So as we take a look at the structure of the S&P 500 right now, uh, kind of laid it out here. Uh, didn't put the full FIB uh, and retracement levels, but this is the 50% retracement level right here of this steep precipitous decline. And now the bear market rally has taken us into the 50% retracement level, which is an interesting juncture with earnings reports getting set to kick off this week. 2650 remains initial support, 2450 below that. Resistance uh, still in that 2800 to 2900 zone, uh, which is uh, very close to the 50-day moving average at 2909. 200 days still up here at about 3015. RSI holds bearish ranges despite the rally. Remember, kind of 60 uh, is the top end of bearish ranges for the RSI indicator. And even with this big rally off those March 23rd lows, uh, RSI is still below 55. Chicken money flow is bullish, but we do note this declining trend here uh, in, in money flow. So something to keep an eye on uh, that we continue to watch. I, I think this is kind of a make or break week uh, for different views out there. Um, with earnings set to begin, the big banks start reporting tomorrow. Uh, stocks, you know, S&P 500 at the 50% retracement level, you know, the bears want to see a fade from here and start to see breaks of these initial support levels if you're still in that retest camp. Bulls, on the other hand, uh, want to see the market look past what is likely to be bad news on the earnings front and continue to march higher. I do think that this week is an important week. Let's dive into our market in a minute. Uh, what are we writing about today? Well, strong week takes the equity markets to key resistance. We talked about that as it relates to the spy. High yield rallies as the Fed has a wider berth in asset purchases. Gold's trend is bullish but extended. OPEC Plus agrees to production cuts. Uh, is that a sell the news event for oil futures? As we said, do point to a lower open here today. Now, taking a look at the major indices from a power bar perspective. Uh, we do have the Dow with zero bullish stocks, six bearish stocks, despite that one and a quarter percent rise yesterday uh, on Thursday, rather. S&P 500 up a percent and a half, 34 to 141. NASDAQ underperformed 14 to 24 bulls to bear. Small caps, big outperformer on the day. Uh, bulls want to see that trend continue. 153 to 431. Bonds uptick. Financials were the big leaders uh, on, uh, on Thursday, two bulls to six bears there. According to the Cheek and Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bearish. Major indexes are mixed. Taking a look at our stock of the day now, this is uh, a stock that I'm highlighting in my note today because with the market overbought, trading into resistance, uh, a lot of the names that we would kind of think about looking at on the bullish side are also overbought. So I wanted to take a look at some overbought bears uh, for opportunities on that side of the portfolio, if you trade that way, or just the types of names where if you bought them, if you kind of were, were bottom fishing and had some good rallies, where you might want to think about taking some money off the table. Huntington Ingalls fits the bill as that type of name. Bearish stock, weak trend, weak industry group, below the declining long-term trend line. 
bearish rating is a function of neutral financials, very weak earnings performance, weak technicals, weak experts, right? So when we roll all that up, we get a bearish stock that continues to lag the market with bearish money flow. Overbought, oversold indicator in an overbought condition. So this rally from about the 140 level up to 200, to me, that looks like an opportunity to take some cash off the table. Uh, if you do trade to the bearish side of the coin, uh, I think that there's potentially an interesting setup here uh, with the market overbought and into resistance. This stock you can clearly see has resistance beginning at the $200 mark. So, you know, names like Huntington Ingalls, I think if you're looking for bearish opportunities on this rally, if you are in the retest camp, you want to look for setups. I think like this Huntington Ingalls here, right? Bearish or very bearish stock underperforming the market still bearish money flow becomes overbought. I think that's the setup here. You want to dive in, maybe look at some puts and put spreads for potential opportunities uh, in a name that, you know, like Huntington Ingalls or a name that has kind of a chart that looks like this, that matches up with that bearish uh, power gauge rating. So take a look at Huntington Ingalls. I'm highlighting it in my note today to check an analytics client. Sector tracker now, moving in the major sectors over the last five days. Uh, I think key theme, off the December, off the March 23rd low is the fact that the, the rally's been led by the names in the areas that were most beaten down. Uh, and we kind of see that here, even with the last five days of trading, everything's higher. Uh, REITs up 20% leadership. Materials were beaten down area of the market. Financials were beaten down area of the market. Same with discretionary. Utilities, energy, industrials, and tech are middle of the road. Healthcare, comms, and staples were market leadership uh, throughout much of the downturn. Uh, so people looking for kind of the big pops uh, went to the most beaten down areas of the market. Ultimately, I do think that that corrects themselves that itself and you want to focus uh, on, on longer term relative strength trends, right? Areas in the market that still exhibit some good relative strength from a trend perspective to me are tech, healthcare, staples, and comms are kind of middling, but uh, still in that group for now. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, as, as the week plays out, as the earnings reports begin to roll in. Again, as I said, I think this is a key week for the market as we enter it with the S&P 500 right at that 50% retracement level. Our industry in focus today, mining services. This one's been a, uh, been a bit of a mess over the past six months, lagging the S&P 500 by about 21.5%. And power bar ratio hints at more to come. Five bearish stocks for zero bullish stocks, currently ranked number 18 of 21 subsectors, having moved down uh, seven slots over the past week. So the uh, bearish and very bearish names that we want to avoid in this group, Cleveland Cliffs, CLF, very bearish stock, Compass Minerals, CMP, very bearish stock, and Royal Gold, RGLD, is a bearish stock. Right, so these are names we certainly want to avoid. As we take a look at the fund itself, it does have a neutral shake and power gauge ETF rating, but the trend is weak uh, below the declining long-term trend line. There's your ratio, five bears, zero bulls. And most importantly, what we look for is a combination of rating and relative strength. Relative strength's been weak for the better part of 12 months. Money flow remains bearish. The fund is overbought. Uh, I think you've had a nice near-term rally here uh, that likely needs some time to consolidate, possibly pause, pull back. Uh, XME, just not the type of area where we want to go hunting uh, for, for long ideas if you think that we are going to continue to move higher. I think that, you know, you get a little bit of an area, you know, a beat, the most beaten down areas of the market begin to rally. Uh, ultimately, the market does come back to what makes the most sense. It's a combination of fundamentals and technicals, and it's just not there for the XME. So uh, want to continue to avoid this group. Taking a look at what's trending now, again, another example of the most beaten down areas of the market exhibiting uh, some strength in the near term. On the gainer side of the board, Gap, GPS, very bearish stock, uh, rebounding here, beat down rebound, if you will. UAL, nothing company specific to send that stock higher 14.5%. They are set to report this week. Kohl's, KSS, again, your retailers, your airlines, these are the names that are rebounding. Uh, Newmont uh, was initiated overweight at JP Morgan. That sent that stock higher by 13.4%. KIM, didn't see anything company specific to take that one up, uh, you know, about 12.3%. Loser side of the board, a uh, little bit of a disappointment in the production talks uh, at OPEC plus sent Fang lower by 7%. Fortinet, nothing company specific there. That stock had been holding in, but it's it succumbed to some selling pressure on Thursday, down 6.6%. Halliburton, uh, nothing company specific, again, looped in with that industry group. 
where there were expectations of uh, OPEC plus production cuts on Thursday. Didn't really pan out, subsequently panned out over the weekend. We'll see if that's a sell the news event. But Halliburton uh, caught a down, couple of downgrades today, also part of that energy group. Pride, PXD, part of the energy group, down 6%. And FLS, neutrally rated stock, down 5.4%, uh, again, being lumped in with that energy group. So the um, OPEC plus group, did come out with their production cuts over the weekend. It looks like they've agreed to cut 9.7 barrels a day, but I think the skeptics are abound given the deterioration uh, in demand. Uh, some estimate, some estimate, you know, that demand is deteriorated by about 30 million barrels a day. So really, a 9.7 million cut doesn't really do much. At least that's the argument of the skeptics. Uh, I don't have a strong view here either way. I'll let price dictate, and we'll look at the oil chart in just a little bit. So the Fed has kind of broadened out the assets that they are able to purchase here uh, to try to keep markets liquid, to kind of keep credit flowing in the market. And that broadening uh, now includes high-yield ETFs, and that lent a big bid to the HYG, the iShares iBox High Yield Corporate Bond ETF on Thursday. That group rallied 6.5%. But interesting to me <clears throat> that the rally was halted at the 200-day moving average, pull back to the 50-day moving average uh, while producing an overbought reading here now on our indicator that we're looking at. This is a three-day moving average of the 13-day CCI. It is now overbought. The group does continue uh, to be an underperformer here uh, relative to SPY. Uh, so despite that big rally, uh, still seeing a near-term downtrend in relative strength uh, for high yield. We had the big rally, you know, took, kind of took us to the underside of the 2019 consolidation zone. Uh, we'll see how this one plays out. I'm not inclined to chase strength uh, in the high yield area. Uh, of the market, obviously, there's going to be or there, there's likely to be an implicit bid given the Fed. Uh, but I think you can probably wait for a consolidation or a slight pullback here. I will note that our ETF power gauge rating uh, for HYG does remain very bearish. So that alone precludes me from really getting excited here in the near term. I think you want to give it some time to work off this overbought condition, uh, see how it plays out following the knee jerk reaction higher on that Fed announcement on Thursday. Gold breaks out, but is now extended. Taking a look at uh, the actual commodity, <clears throat> the continuous contract for gold, we can see a nice steady uptrend above the rising 50-day moving average, above the rising 200-day moving average, is now overbought based on that CCI metric, consolidating on a relative basis. Uh, but what's interesting to me is if we kind of look at whether or not we're extended, I took a look at the 200-day Z-score uh, for gold here in the near term. And, and it logs in with a positive 3.3 reading. So you can essentially think of that as it's uh, more than three standard deviations above its 200-day moving average. So while we do remain bullish on gold from a trend perspective, right, this is an uptrend, right, we don't want to chase strength within the context of this uptrend uh, given the extended nature uh, of gold here. Now, it is trading down small this morning, just something to keep in mind, right? We'd prefer right, overbought, extended, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's a good trend. Uh, we prefer gold when it's oversold within the context of that uptrend or, you know, maybe just less extended than it currently is. So just something to keep in mind uh, as you're weighing the picture here in gold. But there's no doubt about it. That is a breakout. Ideally, you'd love to see a hold above 1700 uh, while working off that overbought condition to then look for an opportunity there. And then we talked about it, our production cuts to sell the news event for crude oil, taking a look at the continuous commodity here. You can see a complete and utter breakdown, uh, and we remain below that breakdown level. Uh, call 35 to 42, a resistance zone. The RSI in this case remaining in bearish ranges despite the near-term rally. Now, crude is up um, – about one and a half percent here this morning, but we're wondering if now that we've gotten the production cut news out of the way, if that does become a sell the news event, in which case you then think about it being a sell the news event for energy stocks, which have had a nice rally here uh, off the initial lows of the bear market. So those are some of the things that we are keeping an eye on here today. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. 
free 14-day trial. I hope everybody has a great Monday. I'll be back tomorrow. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.